In this video, I am going to talk about what is known as a white noise process. White noise process is mainly, uh, you know, found in the uh, in the time series analysis, where it is very important to know whether a particular time series process uh, or time series is uh, white noise or not. And I'll tell you why it is so important before you do the predictive modeling in the time series uh, using time series data. Okay, so a random process which uh, you know satisfy the following criteria uh, the one is the first one is the uh, the expectation of the time series should be constant that's the first one the variance of the time series should be constant and the auto covariance uh, is zero and that's important right so we have seen in the uh, stationary process that the first two criteria are also part of the stationary process but not the last one right so uh, the first one is constant mean constant variance and auto covariance should be zero so what does this third criteria mean well the third criteria says that there is no correlation so each observation is uncorrelated with other observations in the sequence and that's one of the main feature of it uh, white noise process right um, so why is it so important why it is so important to find it out okay before doing the modeling well if the auto covariance is zero and uh, in it which which says that uh, the observations are totally uncorrelated or uh, totally independently distributed uh, then uh, there is no point in doing the uh, doing the estimation uh, or doing the modeling using the time series data white noise process indicates that the data is totally random and there is absolutely no pattern in the uh, in the uh, in the data right in strict sense it is it is diff, it is a totally uh, right a totally not uh, right to go ahead with modeling when you actually find the white noise process so what one should do is that first taste the white noise process before going ahead with the modeling thing okay uh, and so what we usually do is that find out uh, the autocorrelation coefficient Okay, and uh, we assume that the autocorrelation coefficient is uh, normally distributed with mean zero and uh, uh, you know mean zero and standard deviation uh, one by t, where t is the sample size. So that's an assumption, and we will use uh, some sort of a statistical test to see whether a particular time series uh, is white noise or not. So how does a white noise uh, process look like? Or well, this this is how it, it looks like okay it's totally random you can see it seems that there's no pattern in the data so no pointing uh, in you know fitting a time series model in this data because totally is unpredictable right the values are totally random right so prediction is not feasible prediction is not feasible for a white noise process so the moment you find that the process the time series data is white noise stop there you don't have to go ahead with any prediction or any uh, fitting of model right um, so how do you check for a uh, white noise process um, or white how, how do you uh, make sure that the data you are dealing with is white noise um, so you can use a statistical test um, you can use this hypothesis testing to, to be able to do that and which test is recommended for this is the Jungberg's statistics which is uh, or um, which is uh, a standard uh, white noise test you can do so what's the null hypothesis in this case the autocorrelation is zero and the alternative is the autocorrelation uh, for different lags is is not equal to zero right where a stands for different lags it could be first lag second lag and so on and for significance the key statistics should be for any uh, you know for any significance level that we have seen should be uh, you know greater than 1.96 or you know less than minus 1.96 so how does the statistic look like well, the statistics look like this. It's the Q statistics, which is uh, which is which which looks something like this. The formula you can see on the screen. Um, the uh, tau of k is nothing but uh, the autocorrelation, autocorrelation. All right. And then uh, if the if if you are uh, you know uh, taking uh, you know more than one lags, so k will be k is the number of lags. If you are taking just one lag, k is one. If you're taking 3 lakhs, k is 3, and then you can put that in the formula. Uh, and t is the sample size. t is the sample size. Okay, and this, uh, given that we, we assume that tau 
uh, follow a normal distribution some of the normal distribution usually is considered as a, a chi square distribution so it is distributed the statistic is distributed uh, 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 the form is chi square distribution with uh, a degree of freedom of m okay uh, all right so here's an example so we have used a small data where uh, uh, you know we are trying to find out uh, the significance level of the auto uh, auto covariance statistics uh, and the q statistics using the q statistics and uh, we found the q statistic for different lags like first lag second lag third lag and so on the first one is 2.0 the next one is 1.6 and then 0 0.8 and 0 0.3 respectively so which one of them is significant you can see that only the first lag the q statistic is greater than 0.1 uh, greater than 1.96 which is the threshold value for significance level so we only reject the null hypothesis for the first lag whereas we accept the null hypothesis uh, for the rest three so we conclude that only one of the uh, autocorrelation uh, statistics is significant the rest are not but can we infer anything from it can we infer that the, the uh, you know uh, the process is white noise uh, well we need to do a joint test of hypothesis to be able to do that so how do we do that we we do a joint hypothesis like this tau 1 equal to tau 2 is equal to tau 3 is equal to 0 so that's our null hypothesis okay and the alternative hypothesis is uh, uh, you know any one of them any of them uh, is non-zero all right so for a white noise process what we want is the null hypothesis to be accepted okay null hypothesis to be accepted if the null hypothesis is accepted okay using the q statistics and taking the threshold values then we, we, we are sure that the process is white noise and then uh, you know we will stop uh, at that point if the null hypothesis is rejected and we confirm that it's not um, a white noise process then we will go ahead with the further uh, fitting of uh, different time series models right so that's about white noise and that the main importance of checking white noise in the time series data while doing time series analysis. For more videos, you can subscribe to our channel and then you can also go to our website.